In this module, I would like to discuss bivariate regression. So the basic model uh, and, and introduces basic properties. Bivariate regression uses a line to summarize relationships. Now you may be used to the formula for the line from your old algebra days as y equal mx plus b. But statisticians prefer this representation. y, which is a dependent variable, equals a plus b times x. a, in this formulation, is the constant or y-intercept. It's the value of y when x is zero. Obviously, if x is zero, this, the, the b times x drops out, and we have the y-intercept or the constant. The workhorse of regression is b, or the regression coefficient. The regression coefficient communicates the change in y for each unit change in x. And we'll see uh, in a few minutes, it's actually the average change in y for each unit change in x. Let's have a look at some hypothetical data. This is some data, you know, say an instructor has eight students and she wants to uh, examine the relationship between the hours spent studying for an exam, over here, x, and the scores the students receive on the exam. And here are the uh, values for x. She has students, uh, one student who didn't study and studied zero hours and got a 55 on the test. One, a student who studied one hour and got a 61 on the test. Two hours, 67 on the test. Three hours, 73 on the test. You can see where this is going. Uh, the value of each additional hour spent studying is exactly six points. The value of y, I mean the, the, uh, the score on the exam for, uh, for zero hours spent studying, that is to say when, when, uh, when x is zero, is 55, as we can see here. So the y-intercept will be 55 and the regression coefficient will be 6. The formula will be y, that is uh, the score on the test, equals 55 plus 6 times x, which is hours spent studying. Now, most real-world data, of course, is not this neat. You know, it just it, there is no error in this. I mean, there's uh, uh, it's like lockstep. Every time there's a, an additional hour spent studying, the score goes up by exactly six points. Uh, most data, in fact, uh, in, in the work that we do in social science, there's uh, sometimes quite a bit of prediction error. Real-world data usually contains prediction error. For any given value of x, the data will show different values of y. So what if you had two students who didn't study? They both had values of 0 on x, but they had different scores on the test. What, what would regression do to resolve that an estimate for the value of a? At each value of x, regression calculates a mean value of y represented by, the, it's symbolized by y hat. y hat means estimate, not real data, but an estimate of the real data. Now here's a more realistic data set. Uh, over here we have two students, neither of whom studied. One got a 53, the other got a 57 on the test. This difference represents prediction error. What would be the value of y? An estimated value of y for the value of x of zero. Answer, regression calculates the mean. 53 plus 57 is 110, divided by 2, since there are two students in, in, at this value of, of x, uh, and that yields an estimate or a mean of 55. The y-intercept then becomes the mean value of y when x is 0. Now, I want to emphasize, this is not a real number, 55. This is an estimate of the real data, as you see over here. It resolves the, I, the, the question, what, what, what number can we settle on as being an estimate for A? And then similarly, we have two students who studied one hour, one, one got a 59, one got a 63. Uh, if you add those together and, and divide by two, you would get 61. So this is our estimate, estimated value of, the, of, of Y, that is the score achieved on the exam for uh, one hour of, of spent studying for the test. So now, the point here is that the intervals along these estimated values of, of y, for y hat, represent mean changes. b, or the regression coefficient, is the mean change in y for each unit change in x. See, this is much more realistic because this was a, a regression coefficient is a mean, is a mean difference. 
it says for every one additional hour spent studying, on average, the scores go up by six points. So just to summarize this part uh, of the presentation on bivariate regression, this is, this is a, 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 a formal representation here. Y hat, Y little hat on top, this is the estimated value of Y. A hat is the mean value of Y when X is zero. And sometimes regression just has to estimate this because there may not be any cases for which X is zero, but regression will estimate that value of Y hat anyway. And then again, here's the workhorse. B hat is the mean change in Y for each unit change in X. Every time X goes up by one unit, uh, Y changes by B hat. I should emphasize all the terms on the right-hand side of a, reg a regression equation are expressed in terms of the dependent variable. A hat is the value of the dependent variable when X is zero, and B hat is the change in the dependent variable for every unit change in the independent variable. And then, of course, uh, prediction error here is represented by E because the, the formula it wasn't perfect. It, there was some error in, involved in the, in the predictions. Now let's talk a little bit, let's, let's extend this idea and make the data uh, realistic, use a realistic data set, and talk about the question of statistical significance because the, the, the null hypothesis frames its position the same way it frames its position when you talk about any other statistical test. Uh, the null hypothesis is very redundant this way. The null hypothesis, H sub zero, says this. In the population from which the sample was drawn, the regression coefficient is really equal to zero. This is just another way of saying that the mean difference between two cases that, that differ by one unit on the independent variable in the population is truly zero and that the regression is a flat line. As you, as you change X, you do not change Y. And further, the observed value of B hat, or the regression coefficient, according to the null hypothesis, was produced by random sampling error when the sample was drawn. So in every other way, uh, th this, is, this is perfectly uh, consistent with how the null hypothesis uh, states its position in all other statistical tests. Now, B hat is a mean, as I've been emphasizing here. It's the mean change in Y for each unit change in X. So you can apply the same tools, the same skills that you learn uh, in, in comparisons of means uh, to uh, understanding statistical significance in regression analysis. Because like any mean, B hat has a standard error. It has a standard error associated with it. So if we get a, a value of, for a regression coefficient, we know that that's a point estimate, but there's a bandwidth around which uh, the, the true value of B can vary uh, depending on how much standard error, how much error is contained in our estimate. So here's the formalization of how we calculate uh, a T statistic in regression uh, uh, to, to uh, assess statistical significance. Uh, B hat, uh, T equals B hat minus beta. And now beta, of course, is a Greek symbol. It symbolizes a population parameter. And the null hypothesis says that in the population, beta is equal to zero. Our estimate of it w was produced uh, by, random, by random sampling error. So just like in any test of means, it, it's B hat minus zero, since that's always what the null hypothesis says it is divided by the standard error of B hat. Once you have a standard error in hand, you can determine uh, the stability and significance of the regression coefficient. Now here's the realistic data. This, this returns us to the scatter plot of, uh, of states that we looked at in the correlation uh, screencast. Uh, percent college or higher uh, is the independent variable. Turnout in 2012 is a dependent. This representation has a regression line that summarizes this relationship. And here is uh, here are the, the elements of that line. Estimated turnout in 2012, which would be y hat, equals a, which is 43.78. This is the estimated turnout when x is zero. So in states where nobody has a college degree or higher, the regression would estimate a turnout to be about 44%. Plus, and here's the key here, 0 0.60 times a college education or the percentage of population with college education or higher. Translation, uh, for every one percentage point increase in a state's population that has a college degree or higher, turnout goes up on average 
by 0.6 of a percentage point. And you can, see, you can see there's a lot, quite a bit of prediction error in this. The null hypothesis comes forward and says, well, you know, you got this pattern in your, in your data, but in the population, the regression line's really flat and really equal to zero. There's, enough, there's so much error in this 0.6 that it actually could be zero. Let's test that. Just review first. A hat, this is the estimated turnout for states with zero college graduates of 43.7. B hat, the interpretation on average, turnout increases by 0.6, that is six tenths of a percentage point for each one percentage point increase in percentage of college graduates. Again, the 0.6 is expressed in terms of the dependent variable. All right, here's some statistics for this, for this problem we're looking at. Uh, the computer tells us that the standard error for B hat for the, for the regression coefficient is 0.18. Now, what does this mean? This means, uh, by, by, by shortcut rule, you can look at the regression coefficient here as 0 0.60, and you can, you can do a calculation and say, well, 95% of all possible regression coefficients in the population, all, all possible mean differences uh, for every one unit change in college graduates, are going to fall between 0.6 minus 2 times 0.18, which would be uh, uh, about 0.24, that would be the low end estimate for the effect of college graduates on, uh, on turnout, or 0 0.60 plus uh, 0.36, which would be 0.96. So uh, by sort of shortcut rule, we can see that even if you give the null hypothesis every opportunity to explain the results, as you will go as low as 0 0.24 as, as a, the value of the regression coefficient. You're not gonna go to zero because that represents a very unlikely event. Uh, more formally, we calculate the T-ratio, 0.60 divided by 0.18 is 3.33. And the way regression works, it, this would be, this is with two degrees of freedom. Uh, with uh, 48 degrees of freedom, the, the, the uh, computer calculated a p-value of 0 0.002. Translation, if H0, the null hypothesis, is correct, you would obtain these results by chance two times out of 1,000 by chance. So of course, because uh, 0 0.002 is less than 0 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis and say, just to review, the informal plus or minus two shortcut rule, 95% of all possible random samples will yield regression coefficients in the range between 0 0.6 minus two times 0.18 at the low end and a 0 0.6 plus two times 0.18 at the high end. So just, uh, you know, quick, uh, quick and easy between 0.24 and 0.96. H0's lucky number, the number that we that would have to be, if, if the 95% confidence interval in, included zero, we could not reject H0, the null hypothesis because uh, the null hypothesis is lucky numbers in that interval, but it's not in within, within our range here, so we re would reject the null hypothesis. And then of course the computer returned a p-value of 0.002, or interpretation, under the assumption that H0 is correct, chance processes would produce these results two times out of 1,000 by chance. Reject the null hypothesis.